raise your drinks up casually. Raise your drinks, raise your drinks up, raise your drinks up casually. It's the Black Bourbon Family. Hey everyone, I'm Jason. And I'm Brandy. And we're the Black, Black Bourbon, Bourbon Family. Family. Today, we're going to talk about how to get rare bourbons, allocated bourbons, highly allocated bourbons. We got a couple of examples right here, and we'll tell you how we got each of these. And as we go through our list of how to get rare allocated bourbons, regardless of if what we say is how you feel you would get it, we still want you to put that in the comments. Put in the comments how you would obtain highly allocated bourbons. Because what it what it'll do is it'll help everyone who reads it kind of see, oh, a lot of people are saying this is the way that they've been doing it. I haven't tried it. So maybe I'll give that a try. You know? Yeah. Um, and you can see that it works. And you can see that it works. <laughs> That's Ex the most important thing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, one other thing, small note. You all, you are really helping us out. We are very close to 2,600 subscribers on our path to 3,100 <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> Ambitious goals we have. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody said uh, that I need to put on a mankini. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> um, but anyway. So, if you could do us another quick favor, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Instagram. Uh, we post all of our thumbnails on Instagram so you will know when we uh, post our next video. And quick shout out to our Patreon members. Yes. You know, we had a couple of new Patreon members. Thanks for joining us, Aaron and Jason. We really appreciate you uh, considering or joining us on Patreon. And thank you to all of our Patreon members. We appreciate the support that you show us for our channel. Okay, Brandy, I am ready. Are you ready? Whew, a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. All right, so give the folks our first tip on how to get allocated bourbon. Well, the number one well, I don't know. I don't know if we can say it's ranked in order, uh -huh. but I think an important thing to do is to build relationships with the store, um, the liquor stores, your liquor, your local liquor stores, mm -hmm. um, and and basically just go in there and and just build those relationships. Have you know conversations? Don't go in there and just say. <laughs> Do you have um, O. Carter mm -hmm. or you got some Stag Junior? They're gonna tell you no every single time, right. <laughs> <laughs> unless you catch them in a great mood. Right, right. <laughs> but um, but I think it's also important to learn about bourbon, mm -hmm. um, and so that also helps with your conversations with your local liquor store. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I would say check out their store picks. Yes. Yes, the store You know, picks. they have spent so much time going down to the distilleries and and selecting, you know, certain bottles for their store. And what better way to help support that local liquor store who you are trying to get, you know, <laughs> um, allocated bourbon or just, you know, some good bourbon. Mm hmm then to support them and you know what they've spent some time doing as well yeah that's very good um and then understand how they distribute allocated bourbon yep um you know sometimes it could be you know through a lottery or you know money you spend um over a course of a year and so you know if you know how they distribute the allocated bourbon then mm -hmm. that also helps you as, as well and then also become a regular. Yep. Uh, become a regular. <laughs> you know, they see your face, they become familiar with you, and that's how you build a relationship. If you just come in every other month, 
um, right. they may forget who you are. Right. When, <laughs> when the hot stuff comes out, then yes. you go in there. Oh yes, yeah. don't don't go in. You know, during the hot stuff time. You yep. know, when it's it's time for the allocated to be released. That's mm -hmm. just, yeah, that's not going to get you anywhere. Right. So, I would say that, and then, um, and then also when you're building those relationships. Tell them what you like, mm -hmm. what you're looking for, um, but I wouldn't do that on your first initial <laughs> <laughs> conversation. So that's that's the first one I would say: build relationships with the local liquor store. Yeah, I think that's that was a lot. That yeah, <laughs> but but you know from what we what I got here, these two were based on relationship building you know and a lot of the other ones that we have as well but these were some of the first two that we got that were you know fairly highly allocated bourbons that through building those relationships we were able to get so no i think that's very very true and i think being genuine about it too not just trying to get allocated bourbon i mean people can re you know like people can see through that too yeah so you just you really have to be your genuine self mm -hmm. yeah and so the second one that we're going to talk about is, you know, that one, to be honest with you, for those who are, who feel comfortable and are outgoing, you don't necessarily have to be an extrovert, like super happy or whatever, but you know, those that feel comfortable just having those conversations. Cause a lot of people just like, look, I don't, I got enough friends. I don't need to make another one. <laughs> and they just don't care. Right. I mean, that's just seriously yes. how people, some people feel and you know, and that's fine. The one that I'm going to talk about is, and people may not like this, um, is pay secondary. But but I got a reason why I'm saying that, right? And so the reason I'm saying that is that there may be some people who they really only want a bottle of Stag Jr. for the year. They really like Stag Jr. They've had it in the past. And they're like, look, that's all I want. And I don't want to go in talking to Brandy, who owns a liquor store, asking her about bourbon. Even if it's something that I enjoy talking about, I just may not want to talk to the local liquor store. And because it's only one bottle that I'm really interested in, I like to have it annually, I'm just going to pay secondary. Now, people may say I'm crazy, I'm helping the secondary market <laughs> or whatever, but you got to think about it from that person's perspective is they feel like they, they don't have the time to put in. Or they're not comfortable. Or they're not comfortable, right? Yeah. To do that. And so with that said, I feel like if, you know, your, your funds are available and you can pay the secondary price, pay secondary now it may help hurt those that don't pay secondary and continue to drive up prices or whatever but if that's your method and you only have one bottle or two bottles that you really want for the year that's save what you up and go for it that's it <laughs> seriously yeah. right and before we get into number three you know one thing i forgot to mention in the beginning is there are a lot of great bottles on the shelves every day and so I don't want people to feel like that if they don't have a rare bottle that they can't get good bourbon. We just did a video on six bottles of bourbon or six bourbons that are great, fantastic. Most of them are reasonably priced. There was one $100 bottle. Mm -hmm. Randy was, you know, <laughs> looking at me. But my point is, is that just because you don't get a rare or highly allocated bottle doesn't mean you're missing something. And we also talked about those bottles that disappointed us in 2021. Some a little expensive too. Yep. So just because <laughs> it's expensive doesn't mean it's great bourbon as well. Right. So just want to throw that out. But second one is pay for secondary. All right. All right. <laughs> so number three, mm -hmm. enter into the bourbon lotteries. So I mentioned in, in you know in my segment that your local liquor store may have lotteries. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you enter into those 
local lotteries. Um, they do work. I, I do know someone who was able to win mm -hmm. a bottle. Um, they live in Kentucky in a, a, a shop at Kroger mm -hmm. and they entered the, the lottery and they was able to get, I think it was um, Old Rip. It was Old Rip. Yeah, it was, it was Old, an Rip. Old Rip bottle. Yep. So Old Rip 10. Yeah, yeah. so it works. Um, so, like I said, and a lot of the stores have rare bourbons, and then some people, that's all you can do is enter lotteries. So, yeah. um, but the cost, you might have to pay for the cost to enter the lottery, mm -hmm. and there may be a set price for the purchase of the bourbon. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that's another option for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 to your point, you know, someone, we know people who have won in lotteries, so it's not like you don't have the shot at winning you do yeah so all right so then the next one that i'm going to talk about is similar to a lottery it's more of an auction it's called it's an auction so there are and there have been a lot of auctions going on especially uh recently mm -hmm. there was an auction that happened on youtube i can't remember who did it i think it may have been uh mash and drum where he was raising money for those that were uh impacted by the tornadoes and the, the bad weather in kentucky there was another one that stuff and whiskey did back in december or late uh november around ment mental health uh, awareness uh, and then there was I know ADHD whiskey did one and so those are three YouTube channels that did auctions to help support a special cause and there are other auctions you just have to search for them where they have great bottles so these aren't just like a 1792 small batch that anyone can buy okay. they have great bottles that they're auctioning off and I think it would be another good option for you to consider as you're looking for the special bourbon or your allocated bourbons. And they, you know, they'll tell you what bourbons are going to be available for the auction and you can make a decision on if you want to enter. So that's number four, the auctions. <laughs> <laughs> And number five is join your bourbon groups on Facebook or Reddit. Mm -hmm. um, these groups have access to, you know, certain bourbons and due to their size. Mm -hmm. And so, and then they also have access to barrel picks when, um, which are known to be really, really good. Mm -hmm. So if you join those Facebook groups and then sometimes people give you tips yeah, or they also they give do. you ideas when the lotteries are coming up, auctions are coming up. So, and, and then, like I said, you can just also sometimes purchase them on there. So yeah, yeah, those are, are good avenues to, um, also, pick up some great bourbon yeah absolutely absolutely um I, I feel like there are a lot of groups out there i don't know a lot of them but i've heard of some groups that they've been very successful with getting a lot of the highly allocated bourbon so good good uh good choice <laughs> <laughs> all right so our last one you're gonna laugh at me when i tell you this but our last one is just go hunt. I personally, when we first started really getting into bourbon, I used to be out there a lot. Just driving around to different stores, seeing what they have. And as a matter of fact, that's how I got this Rock Hill Farms. I called Brandy as soon as I got into the car. I was like, Brandy, you will not believe they had a bottle of Rock Hill Farms sitting on the shelf. And they did. They did, and I picked it up, and I kept looking around, say, is it anything else? Did I miss it? You know, and hunt. So, you know, you can hunt in your local area. I'm sure you have multiple liquor stores around you within a certain vicinity. When you go out of town, you can go looking. When we went to Denver recently, last summer, we were looking around. We saw a couple things that we picked up. And then talk to your family or friends ask them about you know certain liquor stores that you've heard of that may have something old carter a friend of ours said they saw a bottle of old carter in their area on the east coast and i was like can you can you pick <laughs> us up one and it was like yeah they went back the next day they picked us up a bottle so 
these are tried and true methods. We've tried these and they have worked out. So hunt, just go and hunt, you know, pick a day, figure out what you're hunting for, or if you just want to look for anything, right? Either way. And as you're in the stores, just ask people in the stores. They may not ever see you again, but just say, hey, is there anything in the back that you don't have on the shelves? And you would be amazed at certain stores. They'd be like, oh, yeah, we just got this in. Because some people don't even know no. that it's highly allocated. No. I think the stock boy got it wrong. That <laughs> right. He shouldn't have put it on the shelf. <laughs> but thank you to him. Right. <laughs> But yeah, so you know, we don't want to take too much time, but we felt like this would be a topic that people would be interested in. And the things that we've talked about, again, tell us what methods have worked for you. Because I think it'll help people as they're looking through the comments, they'll say, oh, wow, I see that a lot of people have said that they just go hunting. You know, they look for everything. Or some people say that they have relationships or whatever it is. Um, so let's just continue this conversation and tell us about something that maybe we didn't put up there as well, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. We thank you for joining us today. Remember, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Instagram, consider us on Patreon, and we will talk to you next time. Cheers.